software projects in industry regularly suffer from inconsistencies and ambiguities in the specification of the internet component behavior that easily remain hidden until the integration phase and lead to costly iterations in the development. Our goal was to avoid this problem by using a formal specification which can be integrated and executed automatically. Consider this example of a Carter X scenario. The truck has to stop because of technical difficulties. Once a car reaches the danger zone, it informs following cars about the hazard. Since all cars communicate with each other, the message spreads over the street network pretty fast and other cars can easily avoid the danger zone with this information. Let's take a closer look into the brown car that is about to enter the street the truck is on. Once the information about the accident reaches the car, the driver gets a danger sign in his cockpit which leads him to change the route. This car to x approach can be developed using a formalized process which consists of these five steps. First, let's look closer to the formal specification which arises from the informal specification. In this picture you can see many different situations or, let's say, scenarios. Within our project we work in a scenario in which cars have to cross a construction site. Let's look closer into that. First, we have to abstract the scenario to be able to extract the roles. Now, the interactions between these roles can be modeled in a formal specification, for example in model sequence diagram. This MSD can now be translated into a specific language, the Scenario Design Language, which Scenario Tools uses, a tool that can be used to execute formal specifications. After this, let's take a closer look at the execution environment. All clients communicate with Tantra's server, which is the MQTT broker. If, for example, a sensor of a robot notices something that maps to a defined message, it is sent via the MQTT client, number one, to the central server, number two. Every robot receives all messages, number three. This is a simplification we did for easier development in our time-constrained project. The robot then decides whether this message is something it should react to, number four. In every case, it is transferred to the executor number 5 and fourth to Scenario Tools Runtime number 6. Scenario Tools Runtime updates its internal state number 7 and offers a new set of activated messages number 8. If the local robot is the sender of these messages, the executor sends those to the server number 9. Next, let's take a closer look at the validation and visualization. The visualization is done through an additional Eclipse plugin. As you can see, all available objects and their relations are shown. Furthermore, all messages that can happen in the next step are listed in the table at the bottom. If inconsistencies are found during the validation, the developer may have to update the formal specification which may lead to some iterations. Otherwise, the software is ready for the deployment. Because of financial restrictions, we had to run our approach on robots. As you can see, there are two lanes. Each lane has the individual markers that can be detected by the robots by a color sensor. The blue markers belong to the outer lane, while the red markers belong to the inner one. Now, let's see some action. First, only the robot on the outer lane drives in circles and tries to avoid the construction site. As the robot reaches the first marker, it recognizes that there is an obstacle ahead and informs its driver about the danger. Afterwards, it communicates with the construction control and asks for permission to drive by the construction. The construction control allows the robot to drive and updates its internal state. Upon reaching the second marker, the robot has to inform the construction control that it is now overtaking the obstacle. Once he reaches the third marker, the robot recognizes that it is finished with overtaking the obstacle and drives back into its lane. As the robot passes the last marker, it has to inform the construction control that it has left the narrow area. After that, the construction control resets its state. In 
the next scenario, we show two robots trying to pass the narrow area. This time, the robot on the inner lane reaches the first marker first, which indicates that it is about to approach a narrow area. This leads the construction control again to update its internal state. At this point, the other robot reaches the marker for the narrow area as well. It asks for a permission to drive, but this time there is already a robot approaching the narrow area. Because of that, the construction control does not allow the robot to pass, which leads it to stop. As the inner robot reaches the second marker, it informs the construction control that it has now entered the narrow area. Once the inner robot reaches the last marker, it informs the construction control that it has now left the narrow area. This leads the construction control to allow the outer robot to enter the narrow area. Now the outer robot once again will overtake the obstacle and continues with its ride. This video and its corresponding software was developed during a student's project at the Leibniz University of Hanover in Germany.